Hey friends, Miss Kay here again to finish our book, The Earth Dragon Awakes by Lawrence Yep. Today I'm going to be reading pages 93 through 105. Late afternoon, Friday, April 20th, 1906, Oakland. San Francisco is still burning. Flames cover the hills. Most of the buildings are gone, but there doesn't seem to be as much smoke. Aquan and Chin heft crates of fish onto a wagon. Ah Sing checks a list. He says, people still have to eat and we have to work. They are the lucky ones. 50,000 people have fled to Oakland. They live in tents set up for them, but Americans object to living next to Chinese. So Chinese survivors have to live in special camps. Chin glances back at San Francisco. Will the earth dragon strike again? So many people have died. He hopes Henry isn't one of them. Every time a fairy comes in, he scans the crowd for his friend. He does not pay attention when a Navy ship docks at another pier. He does not know that the Navy is now carrying people to safety. He is still working when he hears, Chin, I sing. It is the Travises. Their clothes are singed. They look dazed like the other passengers. Sawyer is in Henry's arms. The dog barks a greeting. Chin jumps down from the wagon. He is about to hug Henry, but stops. What's wrong? Henry asks. I stink of fish, Chin says. I smell of smoke, Henry laughs. They hug anyway. Sawyer licks their faces. Ah Sing greets the Travises. Can I help you with your luggage? The ship would take only us, Mr. Travis explains. Mrs. Travis holds up her umbrellas. But I refuse to lose these. Mr. Travis winks. You scared those poor sailors. You looked ready to hit them with the umbrellas. And I would have too, Mrs. Travis says. She brandishes her umbrellas like swords. Aquan is resting on the wagon bed. Chin introduces him now. Aquan nods. Do you have some place to stay? Ah Sing asks the Travises. I have a cousin in Sacramento, Mrs. Travis says. Mr. Travis makes a face. He's a big windbag. I'm staying in San Francisco. Where? Mrs. Travis asks. Mr. Travis waves a hand at the burning city. We'll build it bigger and better. And where do we stay in the meantime? Mrs. Travis demands. Ah Sing clears his throat. <clears throat> it's a little smelly, but I could ask my cousin, Ah Bing. So the Travises move in with Ah Sing and Chin's cousin. It's a good thing they like fish. 5 o'clock p.m. Friday, April 20th, 1906 to 7 o'clock a.m. Saturday, April 21st, 1906. San Francisco. The firemen still have not given up. By the late afternoon, they have gathered all around the edges of the great fire. They are making their last stand. If they do not stop it now, there will be no city left. In sandlots and parks, the survivors huddle under blankets. Embers and chunks of burning wood rain down on them. The firemen make new fire breaks. Bravely, they dart into buildings and blow them up. On Telegraph Hill, people pick up sacks. They tear curtains from windows. They soak the sacks and curtains with water from an old well. When the water runs out, they use wine. Desperately, they beat back the flames. The army cannons boom again. Between the smoke of the fire and their gunpowder, the gunners can barely see. One of the gunners is almost blinded by the fire, but he refuses to leave when the doctor tries to make him go to a safer place. He is the only one with experience on that gun crew. The others wheel the gun to the next spot. They carry him there. Despite the pain, he opens his eyes. He aims the gun. The force of the explosion knocks him down. The others move the gun on. They lift him up and bring him there. He does it over again. 
On the waterfront, the Navy ships pump water into hoses. Sailors and firemen direct the nozzles at the flames. Inland, firemen and volunteers form bucket brigades. They use anything that can hold water, from buckets to big milk cans. Other firemen climb up to the roofs. When the shingles catch fire, they use axes to chop away the pieces and throw them off. Sometimes they even use their bare hands. Behind them, others wait with blankets, sheets, brooms, mops, burlap sacks, and coats. They rush in and beat out any embers or burning wood. People even tear doors from houses for a pair of firemen to hold like shields. Behind the doors, a third person uses a blanket to smother the flames before they can start new fires. The doors blacken and smolder from the intense heat. The teams can work for only a minute or two. Then they must retreat from the smoke and heat. New teams pick up the doors. They advance again to continue the fight. Again and again, the great fire tries to expand. Again and again, the firemen drive it back. In one spot, invisible, poisonous gases build inside the great fire. It spreads the gas over the firemen and knocks them out. Everywhere, the fierce heat starts melting the firemen's rubber coats. They throw themselves into the gutters or puddles. Then they roll around to cool off their clothes. By now, all of the firemen are exhausted. They gasp for breath in the hot, hot air. The heat makes some of them faint. Brave volunteers dart in and drag them to safety. Then they take their place. The desperate struggle goes on for hour after hour. Firemen, soldiers, sailors, and volunteers refuse to give up. Early Saturday morning, three days after the earth dragon woke, the great fire hesitates, then it stops, then it pulls back. Now it is the great fire's turn to retreat. With new hope, the firemen drive it back foot by foot. Coughing in the hot, smoky air, they press on relentlessly. Their charred boots slosh through the wet ash and mud. Everywhere, the great fire withdraws before the determined people. Block by block, it is forced back through the smoldering ruins. It clings hungrily to the burned timbers, but there is nothing left to eat. The flames begin to wither. Slowly, ever so slowly, they shrink. The firemen and volunteers have won. 7.15 p.m. Saturday, April 21st, 1906, Oakland. Ah Sing, Ah Kwan, and Chin have been working all day. They look across the bay at San Francisco every now and then. Black clouds still rise from the city, but there are only a few fires left. Then a ferry brings the news. The great fire is dying. In the early evening, they go to the pier with the Travises. They can see the ruins more clearly. Everything hits Chin now. They have lost their homes and all they own. Worse, they have lost their friends in Chinatown and the cable car men. Silently, he begins to cry. He glances at Henry. He is crying too. All of them are crying, even Ah Kwan. They have not had time to feel sad until this moment. They have all been too busy trying to survive. Then Chin feels something wet touch his cheek. At first, he thinks it is a tear, but then he feels another and another. His shirt is wet. He looks up. It is raining. Henry puts out a hand. Too bad it couldn't have come sooner. At least we have umbrellas. Mrs. Travis says. She shares them around. Mr. Travis opens his, then he winks. They are very handy. Late afternoon, Sunday, April 29th, 
1906, San Francisco. By Saturday, April 21st, 20,000 people have fled San Francisco by boat. Some 225,000 have left on the trains. The trains and boats take them all over California. But others are stubborn like the Travises. They want to rebuild their homes. The Travises are eager to return to San Francisco. I can swing a hammer with anyone, Mr. Travis says. He makes a muscle. His bank has reopened, though it is just a tent in a small iron vault. He could commute from Oakland on the ferry, but he decided to camp out in the tents that have been set up in Golden Gate Park. Eleven days after the earthquake, Ah Sing borrows his cousin's wagon to take the Travises to the park. After the Travises rebuild their house, Ah Sing will work for them again. Chin will go to school, but it will probably be in Chinatown. If there still is a Chinatown, Henry doesn't think it's fair that Ah Sing and Chin cannot stay with them. The Chinese are not allowed in the park. They are being moved to Oakland and the other cities. The people in San Francisco don't want to let us go back to our old neighborhood. Ah Sing sighs. They want us to build a new Chinatown in Hunter's Point. If you Chinese own your land, that won't happen, Mr. Travis says. You tell your friends to see me. I'll give them the names of good lawyers. Ah Sing guides the wagon off the ferry. They go through the dark tunnel of the ferry building. They pull out of the traffic and stare. The great earthquake and fire have left nothing. There are just hills of rubble where buildings had been. Here and there, a steel beam curls upward like a burned pretzel. A charred wall marks where a store once stood. Ribbons of smoke rise everywhere. Everything is still smoldering. Mud and ash cover the cobblestones. It's like the moon, Mr. Travis says eventually. Then they hear a clink. Three men are going through the rubble. One of them picks up a brick. This one is still good. He adds it to a small pile. You see, Mr. Travis says with new confidence, people can't wait to start over. He can already see buildings and not ruins. The next moment, Sawyer leaps off the wagon. Henry and Chin jump after him. The little dog scampers over the rubble excitedly. After a long chase, Henry scoops his pet up. We don't have time for this, Henry scolds him. Then he notices a bit of color in the dust. What's this? He picks it up. It is a cheap paper book. Someone must have dropped it. It survived somehow. On the cover is a cowboy. He blazes away with his pistols. It's one of those penny dreadfuls, Mrs. Travis frowns. Let them keep it. It may take the boys' minds off of things, suggests Mr. Travis. A few days ago, they used to read books just like that one. Life seemed so dull then. Chin shakes his head. You keep it, Henry. I've had enough excitement. He hopes that the Earth Dragon will sleep a good long time. Henry looks at their parents sitting on the wagon. They aren't dismayed by the wreckage. They're ready to rebuild their city. That takes more courage than capturing outlaws. He whispers to Chin. And we don't have to look far for heroes. They were right under our noses all this time. Henry tosses the book to the side. Then he climbs on the wagon with Chin and Sawyer. They'll have enough adventures building a new city, too. <laughs>